In this video, you're going to learn how to model basic 3D shapes in Unity using ProBuilder. Hey guys, Adam here from Pixel Mystique. I make games and I help others to learn game dev. If you're new to this channel, do consider subscribing to get game dev tips, tutorials, and inspiration. And hit that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Before we get started, make sure you have ProBuilder and ProGrids already installed and set up accordingly. If you haven't, I've made videos that can help you with that. Links on top of the screen right now and also in the description below. Okay, for creating basic shapes, you can start with the shape tool by clicking on this plus icon in ProBuilder. So immediately there'll be a new window that pops up. You can also use the shortcut key control shift K. Now, if you click on the new shape button immediately and you don't click on the plus button, by default, it'll automatically create a cube. So that's a the difference there. So let's click on the uh, new shape tool again. And when this window pops out, you'll notice that there are properties that you can change for each shape that you're trying to create. In the case of the cube, we've got the X, Y, Z values, and these are one, one, one by default, and they are in meters in Unity. They represent the width, length, and height. You can also move and rotate this uh, cube before you build it, just like any other Unity game object. One thing you have to bear in mind is that when the shape is still blue in color, it means that it's still being edited and it's not yet in the scene in Unity. So you can actually know this by just changing the shape and the shape that you used to select as a cube has now changed to different shapes. So if you want to confirm what you want to build, let's say we want to make this shape um, two meters here maybe three meters this way. And then you want to confirm, you can click build or you can hit enter. And then you'll notice that the color has changed to this grayish texture. And that means it is now being built in the Unity scene already. So of course, once you build the cube or whatever object that you've selected, you can move it around and also manipulate it and rotate and scale just like any other um, 3D game object in Unity. And while you have the settings here, uh, you can also create new ones by adjusting, let's say, this one to 5 meters. And maybe let's make this one. You can position this here. Hit enter or click build to build. So you can keep creating objects while staying in this window and it'll just keep adding more stuff into the scene. Okay, moving on. The next shape we have is the sprite. So if you click on a drop down here, you can select sprite. A sprite in ProBuilder is a shape where it's a plane and all the values is set to one unit. So it's basically one meter, one meter. It's a flat plane. You can't change the values of this shape in terms of the width and the length, but you can change the orientation of where it's facing. So right now it's facing up, which is the axis here. And it's basically telling you that the surface is now facing upwards. You can click this drop down and you can change the orientation. Left, right, down, forward, backward. So if you're new to 3D modeling, you might be wondering why is there a see-through face right here? This is typically a way for 3D softwares to save on memory by rendering only one side of an object surface. The rendered side is called a normal. In the future videos, we'll explore this concept in more detail as we build more complex shapes and we can see how we can optimize it further. The next shape we have here is a prism. The basic ProBuilder prism is like a three-dimensional triangle. 
and it's stretched along the Z axis. It's similar to the cube shape and in the sense that you can customize the XYZ value. So if I increase this and I can increase this going upwards, I can also increase the Z value, it gets longer. If you can elongate this, it can be a roof or maybe you can shorten it make it like a spike and now to my favorite shape in pro builder the stair shape you can create straight stairs like this one or you can manipulate the curvature to make it a curve staircase you can also create uh, a wider staircase you can make it taller you can also manipulate how many stairs you want. This is extremely useful without having you to subdivide the mesh manually. You can also check off this setting for built sides. So that way you can attach this staircase to a wall without having to uh, remove the sides yourself. One of those optimization kind of tricks, but pretty easy to do here with ProBuilder. And also you can play with the depth which elongates the staircase. Hey guys, I hope you're getting value out of this video. If you do, please hit that like button. It'll really help my channel out. Also, if you have questions for me, feel free to leave a comment or chat with me in the Discord server. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now let's get back to the video. The next shape is a cylinder. Basically a cylinder is a shape with long straight sides and two circular ends like a tube. So this sides right here connect with this circular ends right here, bottom and top. So you can manipulate the radius to make it larger. And you might notice that it's quite jagged right now. That's because you can also manipulate the number of sides. So the more sides you have, the more detail it gets and the smoother it becomes. See if I go as low as four, there's only four sides. That just means that it's like a rectangular or a cube. You can also play around with the height. And then within the height itself, you can also segment it. And you may not see anything here, but let's say we built one right now. If you zoom in closer, there are lines right here that indicate that this geometry is actually sliced. It's sliced this way, it's also sliced this way. So in the upcoming videos when we look at how to edit and manipulate all these objects, we can manipulate more of a geometry if it has more sliced um, edges and vertices. Let's compare that with one that has no segments or rather it only has one segment. As you can see here, the only part where it's uh, segment based on height, which is this way, is right here, this line. There are no other lines cutting across this way. And I mean this blue, dark blue line right here. When we compare it to this one, see, there's a lot of lines there. So that's the difference. The other setting you can play around with is the smooth option. So if you don't have smooth enabled, this is what it looks like. It makes it more obvious that it has cuts and it's visible um, even after you deselect it. So we build this and you can see a side by side comparison right here. This one has visible lines, even though it's sharing the same settings with this object next to it, but it appears smooth. But when you select it, there are hidden lines here that's cutting this geometry. In Pro Builder, there's also a door shape, which is actually very similar to an arch as we spin around here. And it has um, already cut off the sides here in terms of the normals. So you can just easily attach it to a wall. 
So just to demonstrate, if you have uh, already a bunch of walls in place and you just need a door, you can just create that door and then snap it next to the wall easily. It's not that aligned here, but you get the idea. So it's already connected to these edges right here. And because remember it's invisible by default, so we don't have to worry about optimization and manually removing those sides. Now we have the next shape, which is a plane, and it's basically a four-sided 2D shape. And it can be a square or a rectangle because we can modify the width and the length. Unlike the sprite shape that we discussed earlier, so this has more flexibility to it. You can modify it in terms of width, length, uh, segments as well. And this is very similar to the segments to the cylinder. So you probably would divide how many segments this object would have. So when you build the object, you can see if I put 58 segments this way, there's a lot of lines being cut across the surface. The pipe shape is very similar to Pro Builder's cylinder, but it's hollow. It has similar properties, but you can also specify the thickness of the pipe wall, which is basically this, the thickness of this ring right here. You can play around with thickness and you can get creative with this because now if you think about making this into a huge scale object, it can look like an arena. So maybe even playing around with the number of sides, you can go as low as uh, three sides and it creates a triangle or you can go with four sides and it creates like a square but with a hole in the middle. So you can imagine this being some sort of um, third person or first person level where you can push players off into the pit. And you can go thinner as well to turn it into uh, some sort of ring, especially once you increase the number of sides to make it smoother. You can use the cone shape to represent domes, roofs, tents or even spikes there's a few settings you can play around with the radius can be adjusted as well so this can already look like a dome play with the height and then it can turn to a spike again play around with scale here imagine the scale is at a different scale and you can reduce or increase the number of sides to make it either smoother or sharper the arch shape is a very interesting shape that we can play around with. It's very similar to a pipe, but you can control the arch degrees to create disconnect. Hence, you know, you can create an arch because of that. So what I mean is when you adjust the degrees, right now it's set to 180. If you turn it up and make it 360, just type it in, it's faster. It then completes the circle and then connects itself hence making it similar to a cylinder. Apart from using it as just an arch, you can also turn this into a tunnel. So let's play around with, oops, the thickness right here. And then you can play with the depth and this creates a tunnel. Number of sides will determine how smooth it is. This looks like an ancient pyramid-like structure already you can turn it to a roof smoother like a subway so different kinds of tunnels and walkways you can play around with the thickness and the arch degrees to create interesting things such as a pac-man and then there's also the sphere so in pro builder the sphere is a perfectly round 3d object made out of triangles if you add more subdivisions, it will add more triangles and make it smoother. So as you can see here, more triangles means it's much smoother, but it also has an impact on performance. So you have to be careful with that. You can also play around with how big the ball is with the radius right here. And if we want to have some fun. Let's put the Pac-Man here and then let's move the ball right down here. 
we can do is rotate this a little bit. Oops. And we got a Pac-Man trying to eat the ball. <laughs> and the last shape we have on the list is a torus. It's basically a shape that's formed as smaller circles right here that rotates around a bigger circle. It usually looks like a circular ring or a donut. And one of the things you can do with this is to create curved tunnels or curved pipes. So you can even play around with the circumference vertically and horizontally. There's also one more setting, which is called custom. So it's not really a shape. Uh, it allows you to enter coordinates and manipulate it into becoming a certain shape that you want. I usually don't play around with this. I think it's a bit too complicated for me. Might as well just create those 3D models and those shapes uh, using the other shapes and edit them. This one is really nice to have, but I doubt most people would use this. So from all these basic shapes, you can mix and match them around, adjust the settings and already start creating some interesting um, compositions. But in the next video, we'll look at how we can edit all these basic shapes and use different operations and basic 3D modeling techniques to then further refine our shapes and have more control so that we can create the shapes that we really want. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. It is due to their generosity that I'm able to make more games and more videos like this one. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more game dev tips, tutorials, and inspiration. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.